to Sitara, everything celestial. Now, I suppose I should first explain the name Sitara. Sitara is the Hindi name for star. And I thought it would be just a lovely, lovely name. Now, I have also talked about previously, um, I do, well, I can interpret birth charts. So I, they're called, I call them Sitara charts. And so they start charts based on, um, uh, you know, your time of birth, etc., etc. I don't necessarily do all of the calculations an astrologer does. I do use software that, like they do now, because the calculations are all mathematical, etc. Sure. But I curate interpretations from everything I read, uh, and that's enough. Uh, lots and lots of like dense, densely packed information about a person's. Um, uh, well, about a person. And this is what's so fascinating. Now, Sitara isn't just about astrology. We're talking about... The Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking about astronomy. We're talking about astrology. And we're talking about theology. And today we are talking about... The Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks, darling. The wrong cue, but Sorry. okay. Yes, I... Um... Yeah, carry on. <laughs> Thank I, you. And, and some housekeeping, housekeeping, what we're wearing. These t-shirts we're wearing are t-shirts we bought when, no, I actually bought mine uh, a few, uh, quite a, about 10 years ago. And yours was a, a, a few years ago, uh, 2021. So did you buy that? Yes, this? yes, yes well, we bought right. this together. Now this, these are from one of our fra fa la, favorite places, the dish in Parks, New South Wales. I love it there. It's CSIRO. It's the dish that was used in uh, to actually, and this is, I think I mentioned it in the Starlander, in Starlander yesterday. The dish was instrumental, ha ha ha, in, uh, in parlaying or, uh, you know, conveying information for the moon landing in 1969 that happened supposedly on the United States of Moon. Uh, um, so, or the states of, of, you know, the moon state of America. And uh, I now am a bit of a naysayer on whether or not that actually happened, you Ooh, know. Oh, yeah. Conspiracy so, theories, huh? Yep, that's what we're wearing. We're wearing, you have to see this T-shirt up close because, yep, there you go. That's, I love it. That's me. That's you both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... This is the behind the scenes things, you know, getting to see all the production, etc. So, as Dwayne said, we're talking about the Milky Way. Milky Way. I'm just doing a little bit more housekeeping mm -hmm. about what we're doing this for. Yeah, we. I just, I just wanted to say that um, that was so amazing to be there and to know that piece of information about what the dish was. Yep. How cool. Part yes. Of, part of history. It's a, t it's a telephone. Yeah. It's actually a telephone. They're, they, they, it's a radio telescope. The, mm -hmm. the dish at Parks. And it listens out to what's happening out there. And uh, we will be bringing you a bit more things about that. Uh, we we are fascinated with, with astronomy and astrophysics, etc. And astrology is something I have been fascinated with my entire life. And I have shared mm -hmm. everything I know. And we continue to find out together, astrology-wise. Uh, and Dwayne, because you are scientific minded plus as an artist you believe in magic sure. you know yeah of course oh, they are one in the same yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely sure mm. what what is magic, magic and science, and science yeah. oh wow yes i love that yeah. when you say that yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm just like that oh yeah i love that when you say that um but with the uh, um astrology it was actually a science prior to the european i knew you were going to be fascinated with this sequence on this one go ahead Oh, uh, well, um, before it was considered a pseudoscience or dubbed a pseudoscience by European scholars, it was, of course, very much um, the, the science, science yeah. the science by which people were able to read the sky and understand people as well, people who are uh, pattern keepers. Yeah, observation, uh, observing patterns. Yeah, how, how cool. I mean, how did they voyage from far? That's, that's right. They had to read the constellations, yeah. but also they correlated. They had a correlation mm. between... What was happening in the sky actually um, affected the people on the planet, and particularly moon, high, you know, high yeah, tide, right. and then of course the patterns of the pattern keeping, the chronicling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, they would have come to see over time, say tribes, for instance, right? Sure. Uh, astrology wise, I do tend to follow the Western sun sign astrology, which is via Mesopotamia. Hello, Iran. 
and it, down to Greece. So via Mesopotamia, Greece, and then this is what we know as Western Sun Sign Astrology based on the sun's placement at your time of birth. Hindu astrology uh, is uh, is lunar, so it's based on the moon sign and uh, and also Chinese astrology is based on the lunisolar calendar, but their astrology is based on animal signs, etc. Whereas both the sun, Western sun sign and Hindu astrology are based on the planets, etc. So it's quite fascinating. Cool. I mean, <laughs> I've only gotten to know this because of you, you know, um, the information that you have it's on this. It's fascinating. I don't, I have a tenth of, inf not even that, a fifth of information sure. of what is out there. Astrologers really... Are, they're mathematicians and they have to be, uh, it's very, very uh, visionary, not visionary, they don't make stuff up, but they are able to see uh, different interpretations. Of course, if you go to a Western sun sign astrologer and a Hindu astrologer, they're going to have two different uh, versions of your, uh, of your birth chart, of your, of your sign. So what you are in Western sun sign is not what you are in Hindu astrology. So does that... Does that uh, spoil the the art of astrology? Not really, because science, because Western sun sign astrology still uses moon as uh, uh, as an indicator. So there's three right. things. So we're starting off with astrology, but this is about astronomy. Particularly today's show is mostly Milky Way, and we're I'm just uh, setting introducing, up, introducing uh, what we're doing. So I see astrology as definitely a science of the way we can read each other as well as the world and considering we are all from the elements essentially stardust well it makes absolute sense to me that the elements and what was what is out there um absolutely determines how we are it is fascinating though and this is the thing like how can it how can just because a constellation was at this point at that time how can it that all the people born under that particular uh, the sign assigned to that constellation Share the same traits. Share the same traits, and yet, uncannily, they do. Yeah. Uncannily, you can absolutely... It's insane. Uh, 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 ...interpret someone's personality uh, or how they're going to be or why they do something, and you read it and you go, wow, this is definitely me or definitely that person, definitely you. Mm. So astrology is fascinating it in is. that regard, but we'll talk more about that later. Because now, I need my space. Why are we talking about the Milky Way? Uh, because we're in it. Right? <laughs> That's always a good reason. <laughs> and uh, there's some news about there's the There's some Way. news about the Milky Way, which I should look at by the way. So um, one of the things that is happening right now is that the Milky Way is becoming more apparent in our sky. And it's not that it hasn't, it, it, it's, you know, it's not that it's this body that just floats around in an orbit and we can see it. It's just that, what's our cosmic orbit? You explain all of that. Right, yeah. So we're spinning our solar system is orbiting the galaxy at an insane speed. So I, let is, me this break, break this down. Right, because uh, we were talking, uh, I had a thought the other day. How on earth yeah. <laughs> would we do intergalactic travel? Intergalactic travel. Hmm. Uh, we haven't even done interstellar travel. Right, except yeah. for our um, probes or whatever that go out wherever. Well, what is interstellar travel as opposed to intergalactic? Interstellar is within our solar system. Within our solar system. Yeah, right. intergalactic is, is galaxy to galaxy. Yeah, we have right. to leave our solar yeah. system and then our galaxy to even consider. And we can't even leave, um, you know, where, where they're trying right. to. We can so, only get so far as what well. they're trying to get to Mars, right? Yeah, and I thought, wow, it's going to be insane because, you, you know, uh, the galaxy is traveling in the universe at its own speed. So the galaxy, it, okay, let me, let's just start. Sorry, darling, I yeah, have to no, interject no, here because yeah. find some facts out yeah, here. Yeah. So the, uh, we orbit, we spin and we orbit around the sun, right? Yes. And that's a year. That's one year. That's one year. Around the sun. Yeah. Right. But we're in a solar system and our solar system, it, it's, a, it, it's a star, that solar, it's a star. And we have many, many, many solar systems in our galaxy and so we do the the spinning uh, which is the day then we do the orbit around the sun uh, which is the year the year and then the, the sun, solar system the sun the solar system well, the solar system goes around the galaxy which has a center right right so that's one cosmic year they don't really know where the 
center is, do they? Or do they? Do they know oh, the yeah, center yeah. of the well, Milky Way? Because well, of course. Well, just general direction almost, you know? Uh, what we do have to talk about is this. Hmm. So, were you going to finish that sentence? No, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean no, to okay. uh, hijack that. I, I tend to do that sometimes. See, this wonderful, beautiful um, piece, it was, it's actually a sarong that I bought at the Yamba uh, Festival in about 2018, 2019. And it's actually, I'm going to just come and lift the um, driver. So it's actually called Desert Flowers at, at, at Dusk, Central Desert Flowers at Dusk. But Dwayne and I look at that and go, um, that's the Milky Way. And we will talk about other forms of astronomy as well, some other uh, in issue, in issues and episodes coming up because... The First Nations people of this land we call Australia, they have their own astronomy. Likewise, many, many other cultures. So we'll share more information about that in episodes to come. Yeah. But this to me, this particular thing. Sorry, darling, could you just lift that yeah, up? Absolutely. I think I just... Um, this here is a wonderful depiction of what our actual Milky Way galaxy looks like. This here. Come closer. Sort of, it's not accurate as to what, and of course, because, you know, Dwayne and I have flown out of uh, the galaxy to see what it actually looks like. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's pretty much like that. But other, uh, but astronomers and astrophysicists will tell you that our Milky Way is what's called a... Spiral galaxy. Spiral galaxy. <laughs> and our sun actually sits out on one of the arms of the spiral galaxy. So that's really... Um, Fascinating, and that's it's rising because of where we are in the orbit, something like that, and that's why we can see it very clearly. Uh, and it's not that it's just, I think people just think, Oh, is it just some a sort of constellation? No, it's not. What we're seeing is a glimpse of the arm. Now, what, yeah, what so information cool. have you got to share, darling? Well, the diameter of the Milky Way, I've just got numbers and uh -huh. facts about the, the Milky Way. So, our sun is. 30,000 light years away from the Milky Way center. Okay, you're going to have to explain what light year is to people who do not know. <laughs> I can't explain that uh, because people don't quite understand light years and what they mean, etc. Et so light year is distance, right? Light year is distance and it's so. like 9 trillion kilometers. It is the time it takes for, wow. yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, 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 far away for the light to something or to uh, travel one Light year is about 9 trillion kilometers. Right, yeah. Something like that. Could you please fact check that for me? Because okay. I'm pulling things now out of my brain. And it's like, well, it is an old brain, but just check that. it's got a lot of information in it. And some, those of you watching are probably thinking, could they not have done this before? <laughs> it's alive! It's fun to do it this way. This is the bloopers, the behind the scenes. Here you know we're real, not some deep fake. Anyway. Yeah, nine trillion kilometers. Nine trillion kilometers. Thank you, brain. One light year. One light year. Yeah. Insane. What other information have you got for about so for a light year? Uh, not not on ladies. I I didn't even. I just thought everyone understood what. A no, light year was. not ever. No, people do not really understand what that means. Yeah. And, okay. Um, in terms of distance, in terms, so you've got to make it. Uh, yeah. So it's palatable measure, to the human brain. It's not a measure of time. It's a measure of distance. It's a measure yeah. of distance. Yeah. yeah. Because all of that changes when we're outside of our. Uh, Core, you know, gravitational pull. Speaking yeah. of gravitational pulls, what is a, how is a galaxy made? A galaxy is held together by gravity. That's it. Yeah. Gravity is. Yeah. So the force of a black hole, right? Yeah. So the center of the Milky Way has a super giant black hole or something. Where have um, you got from it? Oh no, that's I have. Uh, that's just information from my head. Okay. So the black hole is the center of our galaxy, which keeps everything together. <gasps> oh my God! So we are all in danger of being sucked into this black hole any moment now. Well, not oh, really. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this just because, because I'm kind of like, okay, we're sweet, found each other, great. I'm done because this world. I got to tell you, I think most of us are waiting for a solar flare. By the way, speaking of which, I do share this on our uh, the Daily Egg. 
the the son, our great big wonderful star and ruler, uh, has been really amping up its activity because it's coming to its 11 year cycle of what's called solar maximum. So it just starts to get all a bit, you know, and so there's been a lot of geomagnetic storms and flares coming our way. And if you have been affected mentally and with connectivity mentally as well. Um, but your, you know, connections, etc. That's because all our satellites up there are getting affected by the ooh X flares. It's been quite interesting because astrologers and astronomers are going nuts over certain things that are happening. So the sunspots are bigger than usual, and the activity is really quite insane. So it's cool. Yeah. So and because you follow that uh, intensely, right? I do. You, you, you know exactly what's happening. Is that part of the weather thing? I do thing. love weather yeah. because it's all from out there. And we're affected by um, however ways our, gravi our gravity creates certain things to keep every, you know, our stratosphere. Yeah. It's almost like, is that what keeps the stratosphere together, yeah, you know? Sure. And getting through the stratosphere is what the problem is mm -hmm. because that's where all the fuel comes into it, you know, getting off the gravitational pull off this planet alone, Yeah. right? Imagine having to get out of this solar system yeah that's that that led me to find out how fast we're traveling through the galaxy <laughs> right. which is crazy the speed we try and uh, if we did exit the solar system our solar system would just disappear instantly right because once we're out of it, it we'd have to do it through wormhole technology you know this is we do need to, we will be talking about wormhole technology and wormholes in general uh, at a, a later episodes coming up because we do have to state that we are huge fans of uh, Carl Sagan mm -hmm. and for me his book Cosmos which became the actual show that we uh, that were, that was in the yeah. 80s produced by uh, uh, Carl and his wife Anne who my um, Andrean and she is also very much a science-minded person. And Carl is no longer on this planet. He's, you know, roaming around in the galaxy or hopefully in, you know, in another galaxy somewhere. How but cool. but Anne has gone on to produce Cosmos Again, star, this time hosted by Neil deGrasse Tyson, who was a, you know, like he was, um, uh, Carl was his, I, I say Carl like we know Carl, <laughs> but Carl was his mentor. Yeah. How amazing. Yeah. You know, what we have failed to completely understand, although people who are into science do understand this, is that Carl is a prophet as well. Sure, yeah. He he was all the everything he how he spoke, how he speaks about you know, it was all just beautiful. Well, it would make sense that that's what prof prophets were at that time, you know, science. People Back were science then, or, right. uh, if, because the technology wasn't there, it was observation that they did. And that's intelligence of another kind and Carl Sagan is that so we're talking about way way back in time way yeah, before yeah, Carl yeah. Sagan's like time like Galileo right time. right <laughs> um I don't always I, I have become quite cynical um now consider uh, because of the advent of AI and seeing that people now uh there's fake hosts etc this is why you need to stick with the lives of our days this is not the AI of your days <laughs> D-A-Z -E. this is the lives alive of your day our day no really good thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much I'm here all week <laughs> day um but i have also forgotten what i was going to say so that is also quite You're talking about carl Sagan. carl carl so back then like i don't know i don't really know what to believe anymore i mean did people really really chronicle the truth or did they just fill in the gaps and make up what they uh, what best served them well i guess in some cases they had to but then science made sense of it later yep you know so it was just something to start with so if somebody said something and, you know, and... No, by... I'm talking about the prophets. Yeah, right. I'm, right, right. I'm talking right. about... So, it, right, yeah, right, exactly. Sorry, yeah. So by observing it more, someone would say, because it's a, it's a starting point. Right. Right. At least you can, you know, you have something to work from. Yeah. And that makes it better. So, I mean, and that's what science is. Sure. You know, every generation, knowledge is increased and some things change. It's the search for truth. I love that. Through fact. You know, and yeah. search for... The search for truth is also the search for spirituality, really, sure. because that why does at the moment um, uh, in the current climes, climate climate um, 
you know, life-wise, cycle-wise, society-wise, everyone is really, people are getting more and more uh, looking for ast astrological, you know, because people are, are lacking identity. Yeah, sure. So everyone's going to spirituality of some sort, but nobody wants the doctrines and the confines and the rigidity of religion, because religion, which should not have been, I didn't mention that Sitara is about everything celestial, which means astronomy, astrology and theology. So we will be touching on all of those because that is all celestial too. That is where all the religions get their yeah. uh, inspiration from. Yeah, look at the skies, right? For something. Because it must have been magical yeah. to see, you know, shooting stars. And how do you and explain these things at the time when, you know, there was no way to do that? That's right. You know? And uh, back when we had no infrastructure, mm. back when there oh. was no electricity, wow. the sky... People okay, don't also realize, I, you have had to remind me at times, because people forget that just because what we see, and we see a star here, and a star here, and a star there, that we think that's really how it is. Um, actually, it looks more like just densely packed pinpricks of light yeah, through yeah. a blanket. Yeah. And also, the other thing is, which Dwayne has to remind me of again, is exactly how far the stars are apart because here I'm like, but you can go from this star to that star. Look, I can see it. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not, I'm not like that, but I would, I just have the distance, the, the dis concept of distance. I don't think we have well, there. Everything is so far away. But, it is. It is. Yeah. But of course, because we're talking about astronomy and we're talking about everything celestial, we do have to talk about the fact of alien, not alien, but yeah, extraterrestrial intelligence. Look, look, at this stage, everything is extraterrestrial when it comes to intelligence because I'm not finding a lot here barring from, you know, barring in our studio right now. Anyway, and which means you too, dear viewer. Okay. But um, aliens. So we do, we want, we will talk about extraterrestrial life form because I feel, and this is what people say, that it may actually be very, very difficult for us to have a visit because... It's so far away, but you say, you know, well, you have said, uh, we've talked about the concept of time according to us and according to Earth, according to them, what's out there, right? All changes according to the orbit of whatever is happening. Right. So over time, there's been evidence of, like, if you look at hieroglyphs and the pyramids and everything, so it, it seems like they've uh, uh, recorded uh, sightings, you know, so it's, it, there's this talk of aliens being here, um, intervening with human advancements or something and all the aztecs and the incas which yeah. by the way weren't that long ago they were in the last century yeah century. that's right exactly in so uh, i'm just thinking like what, what if they did come and they said we'll be back in like 10 minutes so 10 minutes to them so i'm talking relativity here, right. right so 10 minutes to them is ten thousand years for us so they will be back in 10 minutes to them but for us we won't see them for another 10,000 years sure you know and that absolutely makes mm. sense and we're going to go back to your wormhole theory just sure. a little bit but uh before that what we're uh, when we're talking about in um in times i mean the other planets in our solar system all have different hours in their day because yeah. because of the sizes and so many of them are so huge like jupiter is yeah. huge right now jupiter is said to be um the protector, because I, there's two differing thoughts about this. They have said that that's not really true, that Jupiter's gravity is uh, and Jupiter's gravitational pull actually pulls in all the meteoroids and asteroids, etc. That could uh, could harm Earth. So Jupiter acts as our protector wow, cool. because of how uh, of its size yeah, and its gravitational sure. pull. Saturn also Saturn, of course, has. It's wonderful rings and oh my gosh. Stop it. I have to share this. I can't wait. I have to share this. Um, I have been out back a bit, uh, quite a bit, and Dwayne and I have as well, but in some areas there, it's best. There's a lot of observatories out back in, in um, Siding Springs, in Dubbo, and if you go way, way out back in the desert, holy cow. But at one particular observatory, I got to see Saturn. And, amazing. you know, it was amazing to see stars, etc. I and mean, we have a telescope. You know, it's wonderful to see stars. I love it. It's amazing. And you've got to understand that these are, you know, a constellation. So you have a nebula here. You have a centauri thing there. You know, what named thing, etc. So you have uh, packed constellations. And um, it's you, you, you look at it and wonder and go, wow. But you can't really. I mean, it's like, okay, 
but it's only when you look through a telescope and I got a photograph of this because this, these telescopes are huge and you can attach your camera to them. Yeah. So you have like a mega lens, which I wanted to take home, but I didn't have a uh, truck with me because you <laughs> would need like, you know, a Mack truck type and thing. A crane. Yeah. And they're trying to write one of those things. But I saw Saturn. I saw Saturn. And it's weird. It's like, nah, they're hanging something at the end of the lens, you know. <laughs> It's Saturn and it's got rings and it's Saturn and it's like that's when it oh, really yeah. like hits you. And that was a few years back. Technology has really, really just, you know, jumped everything yeah. up so that the images we see that are photographed by what's the telescope out there now? The new one? The new the one. James Webb. The James Webb, yeah. yeah. The the images coming from James Webb are incredible. Yeah. Are they are colouring it in according to what gases, etc., or are they actually seeing those colours? Well, um, I think that those are the colors that the, the telescopes capture. Right, because those are the colors that, so prior to that, uh, scientists made very calculated guesses, but 98% um, correct yeah, in that on, yeah. of what gas is there, whatever they were able to tell. Well, this is a colder gas, it would be a bluer, this is hotter, this is red, or maybe blue is hotter, I don't know, you know. Maybe, maybe the farther the, you know, the whatever they're looking at, they might still have to do that. Right. You know, using different um, visual things like infrared and all Right, that. sure. Yeah. They do use yeah. all of that. They yeah. use all of They utilize all the ways of photographing Gamma light. Radiation. That's right. Yeah. To actually bring us all these incredible photographs. Also to, also to find out what, what gases and what yep. elements yep. are in yep. those galaxies. How yep. crazy, huh? Just a spectrum. Yeah, so wonderful. But also for me, elemental, like this is where we came from, all of that, because, you know, it's still expanding, right? The yeah. universe, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the, still expanding. The Big Bang is still happening. How about that? There's another uh, <laughs> statistic that Dwayne has that continuously blows me away because we're not just spinning. We're not just orbiting. And then our solar system isn't just orbiting. The galaxy is orbiting. Not just that. We're hurtling. Oh, right. Yeah. At we're hurtling. <laughs> I don't know how we're, we're not all flying off this planet and despite what other human beings are trying to do to the rest of us. Gravity. Gravity mm -hmm. is incredible. Uh, gravity is something that... Well, it's all, it, they explain it like if you're moving, if you get onto a train and the train moves, it's just a jerk and mm. then you're moving with the train all of a sudden. See, so that's what's happening to us. So we're moving with the planet. And so... We're part of it, literally. Uh, we're moving at the speed of this planet. Yeah. And that's, I think that, that, you know, that train jerk happens when we're born. Well, just like, imagine. Ooh, through the wormhole. Like we said the other day, mm. the earth just stops spinning for half a second. I asked Dwayne this question, like, darling, what do you think would happen if we stopped spinning for half a second? And he went, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Literally, nothing, because we'd all be smashed to pieces. Can you imagine? Nothing. And tsunamis, you, you know, yeah. the water, every, it would just... Oh my gosh. Well, I was going to say, like, some, some planets don't spin. So right. they don't have days. Oh. So cool. one side is just full of light and the other side is Oh, dark. I just assumed all the planets spin. No, no, some planets don't. You know, I was supposed to be studying astrophysics when I was a teenager, back when I was smart. Ha Look, half a century on this planet, lots of information tends to get shifted to the side. So uh, something else I was going to ask you about... Um, black holes and hurtling, etc, uh, etc. Et and we were talking about da -da 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 movement. Anyway, we are talking about the Milky Way. What other facts do you have for me? Because I don't have my glasses on. How old is the universe? Let's talk about how old it all is. So the universe is 13.8 billion years. How old is our galaxy? 13.8 billion years. Wow. So these galaxies are actually as old. So they're spread out yeah sure they were born it was almost like everything was just had come out of the great vagina yeah cool. from the uh, this is the this is what i wanted to say your theory of the other side mm -hmm. and coming out so that train jerk so here i'm uh, I, so I, I put the patterns together like coming out from the other side through the vagina mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> a bit of a train jerk yeah, yeah, yeah. and then seeing the jerk that is the sperm donor i'm kidding you know <laughs> i'm kidding about that Lots and lots of wonderful fathers and some not so, anyway. Mm. But, and then you stabilize and you gain, you know, uh, the gravitational, yeah, well, stability. So what else do we, we got to say? 
So, okay, look, the Milky Way, my apologies, I was wrong. The Milky Way is actually 13.6 billion years. So it's not as not quite as old as the universe, which is 13.8 billion years. Darling, how do they measure that? That's how do they find it out? A light. Mm. Uh, the farthest point of light that they can find and they measure the distance from that. Sure. Insane, right? Yeah, like you, have, you have said to me how you'd like to go back in time with a telescope, right? Well, that, that, that's relativity and that's some other insane kind of calculations that... Right now, our brain is still <laughs> being boggled with that wonderful mathematical problem, P versus NP, and trying to get a handle on it. We've been talking yeah, about no, it. It's, I, it's, wanna, I don't even think about no, it. No, no, we're not mathematicians, <laughs> but we're not stupid. And it's a, it's a very creative, yeah. it's a very, a, a very creative equation. And it's fascinating. And I could not do any of the four, you know, equations, no etc. Hell That's no, me. to get to that. But I can sort of see yeah. something sure, there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is fascinating. So we haven't really unpacked all of it. No, so we, we should have a major conversation. Yes, about. We'll we record it should. and it will be on our podcast on either Radio Fly or RF3 Fly FM. So... As I said, the universe is 13.8 billion years. The Milky Way, which is our galaxy, is 13.6. The sun is 4.5 billion years, as is the Earth. Well, slightly less. So that's just an estimate, right? So they're just rounding it off. Sure. Because um, the Earth... Uh, oof, yeah, how did that all... So the yeah, Earth, but... how did the Earth form in the first place? You know, I don't remember that. Uh, because I was there at that time. <laughs> so sorry. I've just been around a long time. It's you know I've, I just don't remember where what I was doing, what I was wearing when the Earth was being formed. Oh my God! Was there drinks? Was there music? Was there a party? Where were you? <laughs> I was on fire somewhere. <laughs> so when the Earth was forming, of course, with all its you know lava, you have likened that time on Earth's uh, you know timeline as being hell on Earth, but. Uh, everything starts off chaos with with chaos, right? Uh, birth, birth, yeah, exactly. Uh, pearl, you said, yeah. Yep, uh, I talk diamond. Yeah, a diamond through a squeeze yeah. through carbon. By the way, diamonds aren't all that. I don't know why people get so gaga over it. Yeah. But a pearl, and I was talking about this pressurized sand. coal. <laughs> well, yeah, you know that's what it is. Yeah. It's pressurized coal. It's like saying a. Lexus is a... Anyway, it's just a Toyota. No, it's, I love Lexus. So there's nothing against it. I love Toyotas. They were always fantastic cars. I'm just saying, okay, that it's just... It's coal. And coal is actually more precious than a diamond, as far as I'm concerned. Sure, yeah. And coal is a fossil fuel that we perhaps need to just wean ourselves off. Because going back to... And then to, just make diamonds. And just make diamonds. <laughs> and then, you know, we can all just, yeah, get, stay warm with, with, with ice, they call it, right? So... Um, no, the pressurized carbon. Gosh, I have completely lost. No, my we're turn. talking about the birth of the Earth. Yes, I know, but there's something else you had said back. Um, we don't do things scripted, uh, so it's just taking information from our heads, etc. Everything so, is born from chaos. Everything is born from chaos. Oh, everything. A pearl, everything, right? Yeah. But we also talked about pregnancy. Yes. How it is an implosion. It's an explosion inside the woman when the egg gets fertilized. Now the egg sends out frequencies. For the sperm. So the sperm, they don't know where they're going. They don't have a GPS. Hello. They just go in there like, all right, what now? Typical. We're in. Where do we go? It, it, is the, uh, it is the egg with its gravitational pull that draws the sperm to it and chooses. Anyway, so it's that uh, implosion. And something else, we're talking about chaos, I was talking about pearls. And we were talking. I was talking about this in something else in, in episode four, our, one of our podcasts. A pearl starts off as an irritating grain of sand inside an oyster. An oyster to protect its soft flesh and because it is a living being, to protect itself, it coats that irritating grain of sand. Which Have you ever got sand in your swimmers, in your, swim, in your swimsuit? When you're sitting on, you know, just in the shallows and then a wave rolls you, all of a sudden you've just got sand Everywhere. So all of those movies that show the romantic, you know, the, the leading the leading woman and the leading man all rolling around the surf, it's like, nah, mm -mm. no here. one does I'm that. Here. Thanks. You can you guys can be all sexy on the on the surf you want, but I don't want sand up my woohoo. Anyway, so <laughs> that's yeah. what a pearl, uh, that's what an oyster does to a pearl. It coats it, right? And over time, this mother of pearl that it's the mother of pearl is 
being co you know that mother of pearl is actually the oyster shell but it's called nacre darling can you look up the pronunciation of n-a-c-r-e i always get this a little bit well that is what that is the pearl luster and it started out as an irritating grain of sand that became was allowed to become something beautiful and that's what i feel children are supposed to be an irritating grain of sand that then becomes something beautiful <laughs> when and given birth to do you want me to play it yeah sure oops <laughs> okay. ads sorry okay so we will hear it later um and as i was saying we're going to go back to reading about this. And what, what, what we were talking about was how old Earth is. So according to this particular website that I'm reading right now, which is spaceplacenasa.gov. So um, this is from NASA. And that's where we're getting this information that Earth is 4.5 billion years. So when Earth actually... Are we going? Oh my goodness, what the hell? Look, N-A-C-R-E, you can find out the pronunciation. I think it's Nakre, 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 I don't know. But, <laughs> moving on, the Earth didn't have water on it, from what I understand. So... Nakre. Nakre. Yeah. So, Nakre. Nakre, N-A-C-R-E, and I don't know the etymology of this word, which is weird for me, because I usually do. The earth when it was being formed and it was formed via debris, etc., etc. So how do the planets actually form? That will come back with next week on Sithara, episode two. How did the planets form? You can do your own little findings. Let's see what we've all got here. How did the planet form? But anyway, so that's that. And what else do we have information wise? I wish we could pause this so that, you know, Hmm. Do, do you have, I thought you said you had all these tabs to well, read. Yeah, yeah, I did, but it's, um, we're going in different directions. I'm going to yeah, shut yeah. up a no, little no, bit. You cool. read your tabs. No, no, that's cool. Um, uh, uh, it was just information about the distances and light year, uh, how how fast we're moving through the galaxy. So what's the distance from here to Earth, uh, to, to the sun? It's about, I think I do know this answer, but I'd like you to confirm it for me. Um, hang on. I think it's, okay, I'm going to take a guess. Let's see if my memory is good here. I think it's about 108 something or 1008. I do know that there's a really, one yeah. and an eight somewhere in this, in the distance of the sun from the earth. I could be full of it. Um, I had it right here. I just have to find the right tab. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Anyway, we all keep <laughs> talking about whatever. <laughs> so... Um, I, I had said earlier that I, I've become a bit of a naysayer about the moon landing, right? And the, the, the yes, all of the, the you know, dish played its part, etc. But I don't know, over time, and I remember having arguments with people who insisted on telling me that it was all a sham. That uh, the, the Americans did not land on the moon with Neil and Buzz and Michael. I know people forget his name, the third guy. But it's like you know, the Destiny's Child of the Moon Landing. Everyone forgets Michelle's name, which is a stupid thing because Michelle's cool. They're all cool. But anyway, so Neil Armstrong never actually went on to do any interviews about that. Buzz Aldrin milked it. And that famous photograph where you see, it's actually Buzz who's, I don't know if Buzz took the photo or Neil. And you see Neil Armstrong is reflected in Buzz Aldrin's um, visor. So Buzz Aldrin was actually quite jealous of the fact that Neil Armstrong got to be the first person on the moon. Have you got some information for me, darling? No, the distance of the Earth from the sun is 150 million kilometers. Okay, so I was way off. There, <laughs> there was some sort of eight somewhere. I, I don't know. I can't remember. There's some distance there with it. Oh, um, it might have been miles, right? 108. 93 million miles? No, no. I don't know. Because, oh, eight minutes for the light to get to Earth. Well, there are, okay, yeah, the yeah. sun is so far away, it takes eight minutes for the light to get to Earth. And now we've told you how fast light travels, nine trillion kilometers, right, mm, yeah. in a year. So break that down. Gauge it for us. I mean, that, that's, how, that's how fast light is. Nothing escapes mm. light. So 150 million kilometers away from, so yeah, nine trillion kilometers a second i don't know eight minutes something uh, like that maths so this is a light know. year so okay <laughs> for most space objects we use light years and i'm reading now from spaceplacenasa.gov again 
For most space objects, we use light years to describe their distance. Excuse me, if I, while I um, move this here, so you know I can read properly. Um, a light year is a distance light travels in one Earth year. One light year is about six trillion miles or nine trillion. I wasn't wrong. Kilometers. That is a six with twelve zeros behind it. A six with twelve zeros, six trillion miles or nine with twelve zeros. When we use powerful telescopes to look at distant objects in space, we are actually looking back in time. And that's what you had said, you, you know, because that is back in time. That is how the Earth, I mean, the, the universe, the known universe, yeah. you know, unfolded. So it's take a child that grows up into a, 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 an adult, yeah. right? You can still look back in time. As to when that child was born. Yeah, sure. So that's really the Big Bang, the pregnancy, the, the birth of this universe. Now, where did it come from? That's right, yeah. Where did the birth of this so universe... So we can't see past the beginning of the Big Bang, right? What if it's all Inception? What if it's one universe inside the absolutely, other? And it's absolutely, just why the, not? With the Matrimushka dolls, yeah, why you know? Not? Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's been uh, dif uh, explained like that. Right. Somewhere. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. What a thought. And then if the universe is still expanding, because that is what is happening, mm -hmm. not only are we hurtling, we are expanding. Mm -hmm. Then have, where is, so the, is the future there? Well, I don't know. So we're expanding because just think of an explosion happening in slow motion. Right. right. But so, then bang. do some things get left or are we all moving at the forefront of the expansion? Well, yes. Yeah, so, so what's left behind? You know, if everything's moving. Yeah. I mean, has Earth been? I can explain why we're all so stupid on this planet. I think we've all just been left behind, and the universe is going. We're like, hey, and they're like, nah, see ya. So there's this thing <laughs> this called. This species didn't work out. So there's this thing called interstellar drift. Wow. Okay. So that's the because the because the universe is expanding, the constellations change all the time. That's because yes. all the. Yes. All the stars and everything are just spreading apart from each other. Galaxies, sorry. Mm -hmm. Our galaxies, uh, stars will always stay in our galaxy because of the pull of the center. Yeah. Um, what was that? Galaxies are just um, gases and stars, etc., yeah, yeah, yeah. all bound together yeah. by the gravitational pull, which is at the black hole at the yeah. center of our galaxy. And that is basically, it's, it's, um, it is a bathtub <laughs> that um, has a plug. Uh, the plug is not in the bathtub hole. Yeah. But we're all in this bathtub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and if we are not careful, <laughs> that's then right. it's like, what, because we don't know what the black hole will do. Now, this is when we go back to your wormhole the, you know, the technology, the worm, not technology, but mm -hmm. the theory of wormhole travel, yeah. right? And that is perhaps the only way to travel. And that's, that's crazy. Through galaxies, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, as bending of space and time. Right. And this was wonderfully explored in the book Contact by yeah. Carl Sagan. And then the movie, which we will talk about either in Finalysis yeah. or in the next, or maybe also in the next, in another episode of Sitara. Yeah. So about, about that. Uh, wormhole technology. Yeah, it's been explained in a few movies, actually. So I think even in Alien. And also in Interstellar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, by a movie by Christopher Nolan. Yeah. And very simply, it's if you, you know, the piece, piece of paper, paper yeah. and, point a and, point B. and then, yeah, and then you just fold it over and straight through yeah. and that's how to go. And it makes absolute sense sure, that yeah. to get, instead of going out of, instead of fighting the gravitational yeah. pull, you go to it. That's right. But imagine trying to get back into the solar system when it's traveling that fast. So you'd have to target it and just kind of intercept the solar system to get back in. Right. So if you're using wormhole tech, you'd have to time it like. Well, I don't think it's that unsophisticated that it hasn't mm. timed itself out. That if black holes exist within the galaxy, that it is already attached to other something else under the, you know. Well, apparently black holes are everywhere. Black hole tunnel system. We have black holes. That's right. You we have a gravitational pull. Uh, it, what, inside of us? Well, technically. Mag magnetic fields, right? You know, people are going to be very rude about that little bit of information. They're going to say, yes, it's called oh, yeah, an anus. Sure. Your anus? No, that's Uranus. It's a planet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being crass and I don't you know mean what? to be. Apparently, Uranus has rings. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but and it's um, it's a vertical. Right. I think it's insane. Uh, wow, yeah, I did not know that. Uh, new thing, or I'm not sure. I I, I, let me just double check. Yeah, double check while be... I talk about Saturn. Seeing Saturn was so amazing. I have a photograph somewhere. Unfortunately, I think I may have just had it on Facebook, and I don't have Facebook anymore. But uh, Saturn's rings aren't exactly like hula hoops around the planet. Saturn's rings are made up of little asteroid. It's an asteroid belt. It's all, you know, debris, space debris. But because Saturn also is a, has got a huge gravitational pull, it and its orbit uh, keeps the rings right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, keeps yeah. the sorry, rings. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, keeps the rings happening. But um, it's so fascinating. And all the other planets are fascinating. And now, of course, this is why astrology and astronomy are closely related. Currently, in April, and this is a very, very, very uh, intense time for planet Earth, we are going through what astrologers call a Mercury retrograde pre period. Now, astronomy also has retrograde, and this is where, where you know, both the terms are uh, utilized, and they mean the same, but I guess one is more, um, uh, what is it, uh, a spiritual or philosophical explanation, and the other, of course, is the practical scientific yeah, explanation sure. that it's actually just the way the orbits are right now, and that mm -hmm. it looks like, because not all planets orbit at the same time. If you've ever seen a solar system model, a, a mechanized one, you'll see how the planets uh, move against each other. Spiral. Yeah, against it. It's quite fascinating. What an incredible dance. And it is all the gravitational pull of everything that keeps us all in this wonderful dance. Yeah, so it gives the, that's why the illusion of the sun moving. Right. Is because our planet is spinning like this, almost like a helios yeah you know? yeah it's spinning not like this mm -hmm. it's spinning like like that almost around the sun so it seems like the sun's moving but wow our planet is rotating around it at different because you uh you will uh because the earth by the way is not per uh, perfectly round and also you'll notice in um different hemispheres and different seasons how the sun was there but it's over here now yeah. and that's just you know the yeah the way the Earth does its thing. And there was something else. Oh, yeah, we were talking about hell on Earth, right? That Earth was literally hell because whilst it was forming itself, it was full of, um, it was fire. It was volcanoes, fire. volcanoes. <laughs> so the lava in in, in the, the molten, the, the, what is it called? The magma, the core of this planet, yeah, sure. which is where the big, I mean, for all we know, there's humongous giants down there. The dinosaurs decided to dragons. go there. Dinosaurs and dragons. Well, it, it's quite feasible that dinosaurs may have existed still and they were the flying variety and so therefore they became dragons and some sort of you know crazy imagination uh, of, of what are these things but let's just let you know, let's just say that they went down into the into the ground and became uh, humanoid dinosaurs and they're the ones stoking the fire of the molten core <laughs> cool cool anyway um yeah sorry it right. boggles the artist's <laughs> mind Anyway, that is then oozing out of the, you know, Earth's mm. crusts and the tectonic plates, and it's oozing out of there and coming uh, to the surface and creating land. Water came from out there. Very by out there. we came from out there because we came from water. Now, water was actually dumped onto the planet by a meteoroid, which is, is some, I can't remember what the difference between a meteoroid and an asteroid. Meteorite. But, yeah, but, you know, um, so when that, and I have shared this a uh, little bit of information on um, other shows at uh, other intermittent times, but over, um, uh, so when when this meteoroid or whatever it is that, you know, came into the, into our solar system and the proximity of our mega hot star, I mean, Okay, and then, of course, the heat of this planet and whatever cargo that meteoroid, asteroid was carrying, then melted, it liquefied and became water, the great deluge. It was dumped onto the surface of the planet. And you know what? The only thing keeping water on this planet, have you got some information for me? Yeah, meteorites and meteoroids. Uh, wait, hang on. The only thing keeping water on this planet 
is gravity. Isn't that crazy? And we'll share more information about that in uh, episode number two, episode two of Sitara, about where it all began. How did the Earth start to do its thing? Uh, you, I do recommend watching some incredible, um, uh, not watching some incredible, but watching Cosmos, just uh, not just the Carl Sagan ver uh, version, which was in 1980, but also uh, the Neil deGrasse Tyson hosted one produced by Androyan, who is Carl Sa who was Carl Sagan's wife and is a mega science mind in her own right. But yeah. Well, the difference is the size. No, the difference Astro is the size. and meteoroid. Now, oh, there you go. They like to call all these things different, different names. No. So, I'm going to just uh, uh, read a little bit more. Light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. This seems really fast, but objects in space are so far away that it takes a lot of time for the light to reach us. Like, as we said, as Dwayne said, the sun's light, it takes eight minutes to reach us. And by that time, what we're, what we're looking at, that, that, that sun has moved and it's not, um, and a lot, of course, a lot of the stars we think we see, well, it's taking that long. They're so far away, it's taking that long for their light to reach us. And so that's what you said about constellations shifting. And, yeah. Because some of the stars are not there anymore. Uh, yeah, they died. They've died. They had, they and we're imploded. still seeing their light because it's so far away. Yes, they, Insane, they right? supernova or whatever yeah. they did millions and millions of and years we'll, ago. We'll see their light for thousands of years. Yes. So through, through all of this magic of the formation and then when, uh, when humans first came into being, it would have all been just intense. The cosmic rays that would have been seen, the shooting stars, we, you know, to see the moon uh, uh, just like a few days a month, you know, because the, it's because of the orbit. And this is before people had any understanding. Think about when people didn't have words. But all of a sudden, at night, they had this great... So, of course, gods, the concept of <gasps> beings like us, but huge. I mean, is that an eyeball looking at us, you know? Yeah. It could be all sorts of things. So, of course, that's where the god concept comes from. The idea... Because we were all just so... When we came from nothing to all of a sudden being who we are now, that we can travel to the moon, and people are talking about traveling to other planets... The fact that we are being able, we have knowledge at our disposal, that we've got information at our fingertips. This has all got to do with everything out there, of mm -hmm. course, because all our satellites, too, are up there. But all this is, is very space techy. Yeah. Right? Cool. So you can see how astrology led to astronomy or, and theology. Astrology, so perhaps theology came out of it first. First was, oh, what is that? We don't know, but it makes some people go really weird and start howling at it. You know, and that sun, well, what is that? It's burning some people and they're running away, but some people are standing there taking it fully in, with able to withstand the power of the sun and absorbing and soaking it in so that their cells then mutate and create melanin. How wonderful. Yeah. So all of this, of course, can feel like... <gasps> for, for those, it, uh, the less, you know, uh, I guess, then you don't... Um, I think it's easier to convince <laughs> less educated people about the blind existence of God. Of God. No, oh, but they uh, do. Uh, that is a very contentious thing I'm saying. But do they choose to believe that? It's Maybe that's that, why. It's not that they. Because I know very smart people yeah. who who do yeah. believe in God. Because it's easier. It's just I don't want to think about it. That's it. Right. I've got other things to think about. <laughs> and perhaps I should rephrase that because it's not God that's the issue. It's religion. Yes. When people blindly adhere to religion. When astrology actually um, defines, not defines, but actually unites us more than any other classification on this planet. Forget racial grouping. What is race? Dwayne is tri-racial. What does he say his race is? And he, you know, it's, it's a very weird mm. thing to define ourselves by country borders when people of this country say, the land we are on, um, they're not, uh, they're ancient, and the new people who are uh, 235 years, you know, that's mm. all they've been. I mean, how do we define ourselves at all? The Euro-Australians, Euro-Australians are um, insistent that this land is only 235 years old, it's theirs, etc. but yeah. the ancient people have been here for 60,000 years, their footsteps have been you know found and fossilized in, in 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 lakes that no longer exist that we have driven through by the way do tune into uh it's a thursday thursday night 
We're dropping the slide show, which is an old fashioned travel show. And we our first show is talking about uh, one of our trips out back. And this is uh, one of the trips that we got these things on. And we'll be talking about this incredible, which I'm so happy we went there together, my yeah. darling. Dr talking about uh, ancient lakes that no longer exist and fossilized evidence of humanity walking around and being civilized 60,000 years ago. We'll tell you more about that in the slideshow dropping Thursday, approximately, what, 7 p.m.? Or is it 8 p.m.? Yeah, around that. One of those things, please yeah. do we'll check. We'll let you know. Do, yes, we do, and do check the schedule and check the our channel homepage as well as the TV guide in the in uh, everywhere so yeah. it's on Starland etc. Is there anything else we want to say? Oh, that's it. So we will have more information for you later on right now as I think it's quite lovely to do it this way. Yeah. I am so tired of the polish and the editing and the scripted it all is starting to look so terribly fake that allow us this 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 Honesty, this transparency, this beauty of reality that sometimes we're like, uh, and I and I put my husband on the spot like, well, come on, tell me the information, tell me, tell me. And he's like, um, you know, Dwayne is wonderful. So if Dwayne was sitting over there and I was here, he'd be, he'd be finding information really fast, but he gets a little bit of a stage fright in front of the camera, whereas I was born to do this. Although I'm very shy off stage and you, my darling, are not. Well, then that's that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit like the sun and the moon and their relationship. So we'll be coming back uh, with episode two. We'll talk uh, more about the formation of the planets, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. This what is, the sun actually is. Nice intro to Sitara. Right? Yes, this, this is, and we're talking a little bit of astronomy. Yeah. A little bit of astrology, a little bit of theology, a whole lot of facts, and what our term for it is imaginationing. We see patterns, and visionaries tend to connect dots. That's what astrophysicists do. This is what spiritual people do. Doctors have to. You have to use knowledge at your um, uh, at your disposal. You have to always look for truth. You've got to find them through facts. Truth does change fact, but fact is fact. Oh, yeah. Fact is fact. Truth can change it, but fact then is is then fact. So yeah. fact is this is all magical. Our spirituality is all around us, and it is in the in the in the in looking at the stars that we can actually find ourselves if we are really genuinely we are we are from the stars. So looking out there means we can find who we are in here. That's beautiful. So <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for being here for episode one of Sitara. And um, we'll be back next week again at uh, this time, five o'clock. Do join us live, but otherwise feel free to watch the shows at your leisure. We've got more shows dropping. We've got more and more shows coming for you. Tomorrow, I don't know if we have anything tomorrow. Actually, I think we do. So just watch, uh, uh, we'll schedule it, see the space. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow on The Daily Egg. Thank you very much for being here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>